All right, all right, all right. Calm down. No reason to get too excited. I mean, this is a tutorial, but it's just going to be showing you how to set up and change Keyshot's user interface. I've had a lot of people ask what they should do when they try to follow one of my tutorials and their Keyshot interface does not look like mine. So I want to show you that you can change it. It's really simple. So this is what's called the startup interface. And we know that because if we go in the upper left-hand corner of Keyshot, there's a drop-down menu and it is set to startup. This drop-down menu allows you to change between things called workspaces. And a workspace is just a different layout. So if we go from startup to default, this is the way Keyshot has traditionally been laid out and presented to its users over the years. It's basic, uh, but it gives you access to most of the tools that you need. Now, in a lot of my tutorials, while I try not to do too many crazy custom user interfaces, you might see that I'm working in something called Will's workspace, which is almost the same as the default, but it's a little more simplified. And I want to take you how to or show you how to go from the default to build your own custom interface as well as some things that I typically change and some other little things that may be not so intuitive. So the first thing we've got across the top is called the ribbon. If you right click on it, you can enable or disable certain parts of the ribbon or tools. And these tools basically are, again, just shortcut menu items. Now, to be honest, I really do turn off pretty much all of these typically, because once you start using Keyshot, you tend to memorize different keyboard shortcuts. Uh, one thing that I like to uh, leave on is the GPU in case you're going to go back and forth between CPU and GPU mode. Uh, performance mode, I like to leave that up too. Same with pause. CPU usage is nice because it allows you to change how much of your computer's processing it's using at any given moment. You don't have that flexibility with GPU. I think unless you have multiple GPUs, maybe. And I leave the workspaces drop down on. Now, of course, you can enable as many of these as you want. Play around with them, that's fine. Um, yeah, uh, maybe tools, maybe leave tools. Keyshot in, um, I think, 10, maybe 9 and 10, I don't remember, started putting some of their uh, things in tools here that can be handy, so. Okay, and then now for the bottom, we've got this big thing here. This is called the um, toolbar. Shoot, is it? I'm starting to forget. Ribbon T toolbar, yeah. Okay, so if you right click down here, we've got uh, the option to turn on or off text and we can make these logos uh, small. Uh, I see no reason to leave them large. Uh, you barely, like I seldom click on them, so yeah. Now, one thing that's easy to miss is down in the lower left-hand corner here, this is the Keyshot Cloud icon. This will take you to the Keyshot Cloud library that has freebies that you can download from Keyshot, whether the materials or backdrops or textures, things like that. In the lower right hand corner is the screenshot button. This takes a snapshot of whatever you're rendering in the real time view. Now the real time view is of course, this thing in the middle where your objects appear and where we do our rendering. Now you can also hide at any point, most of the menu items, and you may accidentally discover this by hitting a button on your keyboard. So if you hit R, for ribbon, it will hide the ribbon across the top of your Keyshot user interface. Same with T, which is short for toolbar. That would hide the toolbar across the bottom. Now, if you accidentally hit M, as in uh, materials, it would hide the material library, which is on the left-hand side. And if you hit the space bar, that would hide over here the project panel, which has kind of like all the settings for your scene. So T, M, space, uh, R, those are going to be all the buttons for those. And if you're trying to remember your keyboard shortcuts and you can't remember all these various keystrokes, K on the keyboard will actually bring up the Keyshot shortcuts menu. And from here, you can quickly reference some of the more common keyboard shortcuts. And if you really want, you can get in here and uh, save this as an image. Some people print these out or leave them somewhere handy. Um, I, I don't see how that's any faster than hitting the keyboard shortcut button, but teach their own. 
Uh, you can also go into setup and details and from here you can customize or change some of these if you don't like their defaults. A couple other items I wanna point out here. Um, you can, if you ever want to customize the project panel or the library, um, you can t uh, tear off these different tabs. So basically a project panel and the materials uh, library and everything, they're, or the library panel, I guess is what that's called, they're all made up of these tabs that you can technically pull off. And uh, if you close them up, they'll just kind of go back to where they were. Now, if you wanted to, you can actually dock a tab as well. So if you start to bring this uh, to the border here and you hover, uh, if, if something moves and turns blue, it means it's going to place it wherever it's showing you it's gonna go. So in this case, we have a vertical docked um, scene tree, and then you've got the rest of your tabs down below. And you can also, uh, you might have noticed, you can also drag this on top of everything, which is interesting because when you do that, it just goes back uh, to where it was. Um, when you drag this further to the right, you actually have the ability to dock to the right or the left of the rest of your tabs. It's a little, a little hard to get that to work, but just kind of drag around till it works um, and then let go. Uh, these little three dots, those mean you can drag, click drag right and left to re uh, reveal the model sets here as well, which is a component of the scene tree. And um, you can also get rid of a tab if you don't ever use it or if you don't like it. So for example, in the uh, library panel on the left, we've got models. Um, if you don't use this or if you weren't planning on it. Actually, one thing that I would get rid of um, if, if ever there was one is favorites. I just don't use favorites. I don't quite, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I get it. You can create a collection of items regardless of what type of asset they are. It just, I don't know. It doesn't, I never use it really. So you can right click on it and you can turn it off. So if I want to get rid of favorites, just uncheck it. And now it doesn't exist within those tabs. Uh, the other thing is if you're a little bit new, you might find that including text to explain what these tabs are is helpful. And, you know, if you prefer text over icons, you could technically get rid of icons, but I think that would be a little more confusing. But again, just depends on what you prefer. So as we're making all these changes, of course, we can save the results of this, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. There's a couple other things I want to point out that I think are helpful when it comes to setting up your a workspace. Um, when you're looking at materials here, this is a good example. Um, you may be presented with thumbnails of the materials and thumbnails are fine, but I think they're, I don't know, not very fast to navigate. Yes, you can see them visually, but you can't read the names. And the reason I have an issue with that is if I'm reading the name of these materials, you see anodized aluminum is repeated multiple times, but it doesn't explain what the difference is. So when you go to the list view, this is going to show you the name of everything. And you may find that there's some critical information like this is a hexagonal mesh material. That's pretty important. Um, you can also scale these thumbnails. It's pretty cool. And um, I think that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you there. Uh, a couple other things, the way I like to work when I, do animations or get into a few more uh, complex uh, scenes is to uh, bring up a couple more items. So if we were to go up to window and then choose the studios, you'll see U is the shortcut on the keyboard for that. Studios are great, it's super good feature. Um, I think I sort of explained how to use them in the light studio tutorial. I'll try to link that up uh, in the card overhead. Now, if you drag the studios, I usually drag that to the right and I keep studios handy almost all the time, um, unless I'm really not going to use them. I, I like having that up. The other thing that I find quite helpful is using the geometry view, which uh, under window, you'd find O as the shortcut for that. And here's the geometry view as well. Now, I don't always dock the geometry view because uh, you know, kind of takes up a lot of space. I use it as like a secondary viewport though. Uh, if we can dock it over here, 
um, you know, one thing, let's see if I can get this to work. There we go. So you can actually dock the geometry view over top of your library, which I think this is pretty cool because usually I use the geometry view to set up my scene. So I like to work in the geometry view while keeping an eye in the real-time view. And then when you're ready to get into materials, you can just go back to the tab below your geometry view, toggle to library mode, and there you are. Um, that's a pretty ideal way to work, I think. Maybe I would do that on the right side. I, I have a habit of keeping my geometry view on the right and the real-time view on the left, so maybe this is a bit more realistic. A couple other things if we go into the preferences, under Edit Preferences, if you're on a Windows machine, um, there are a couple things. If you are using a high-res uh, monitor or laptop screen, this high DPI support should probably be checked on. You can also change the size of fonts, which will show like on menu items and stuff here. And your theme. Uh, Keyshot used to uh, have this thing called a light theme, which kind of burned your retinas. <laughs> while you worked, especially late at night. Now I think they default to dark theme, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, that's how you would change those. Of course, there's more settings you can get into here, but for now, I just wanted to keep this focused on the user interface. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. Now, if you wanted to save this layout because you are happy with the way it looks, what you can do is go down under your default and choose add. You would add this as a new workspace and you would name it. So I already have one called Will's Workspace. I'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and put this on, you know, I'll call this Will's Workspace and see what happens. Looks like it did not overwrite it because I used an apostrophe S. I think it should have, if they were character for character match, it would have asked me if I wanted to replace it. Um, you can also manage your workspaces. Uh, you could delete them. So if I want to delete this workspace, I could go ahead and delete it. And I could probably go in and say rename or update the existing one. So to update Will's workspace, so if I go to Will's workspace, um, and let's say I make a change, like, I don't know, let's just go ahead and pull this out and dock it. Not quite where I wanted it, there we are. So I should be able to go in and update this as well and choose uh, apply changes, I think, and that should update it. So there you go. So for now, um, that's a bit of an overview of the user interface. Uh, before I forget, there's this thing called the heads up display. You can hit with the H key. It gives you some useful information about what's going on in your scene. That I would consider that part of the user interface, but um, again, I'm not gonna get into you know, how all that works now. And I guess last before, uh, last but not least, A is for animation. If you hit A on the keyboard, that'll bring up the animation timeline. That's part of your user interface as well. So with that, uh, this ended up being a much longer video than I thought. I thought it was gonna be like a minute long, but I guess I'm wrong. So hopefully you find this helpful. Till next time, happy rendering.